This is a short overview of the original wartime chain home stations along with an example of IFF. As early as 1935, Great Britain was actively looking for a reliable way of identifying any aircraft coming into its airspace, particularly along the southeast and east coasts. These early radar stations were called chain home. By the outbreak of the war in 1939, they were completed. However, in 1940, the number of stations were expanded to include a number on the west coast and in the north. Chain Home was a radar system that consisted of three transmitting and four receiving towers. The transmitted pulses were set out at a relatively low frequency, even when compared to those being used for radar only a few years later. Nevertheless, the station could still detect aircraft as far away as 80 to 100 miles. Unlike radar screens where you see in use today, the chain home operator screen was a basic affair called an A screen. Upon this was a single horizontal straight line which registered downward spikes to signify radar reflections or contacts. As the towers did not move, the radar pulses could only be pointed in one direction, i.e. out to sea. Whilst this basic system only told the operator how far away the contact was, by adding more sophistication to the towers and including an operator control called a goniometer, it was also possible to judge the height at which the aircraft were flying as well. By centrally processing this information coming in from each of the chain home stations at a local filtering room, it was possible to calculate the exact position. In the simplest of terms, a radar signal is just a high frequency echo. A radio pulse is sent out from the transmitter and the receiver waits to see if anything is echoed back. By using this information, we can see that if we start drawing a straight line from the left on a screen when the transmitted pulse is sent out, if we now connect the receiver to the same screen, if an echo comes back, we'll see it as a second pulse further over to the right of the line being drawn. Whilst in the case of Chain Home, the line on the screen was drawn from left and the received pulses were depicted as a downward spike, other similar types of radar systems have preferred to give an indication as an upward or positive spike, such as radars used by the US forces at the time of the Pearl Harbor attack in 1941. As the Chain Home radar screens gave this limited information, it was down to the experience of the operator to interpret this correctly. For example, with a single aircraft showing up as a single downward pulse on the screen, a second aircraft flying a few miles behind or in front would be shown as a second pulse further along the line on the screen. If, however, the two aircraft were flying close beside each other, the operator would notice the single spike on the line would be seen to repetitively grow and shrink in size. By using the goniometer control on their console, the more experienced operator would typically be able to identify if the aircraft were flying close together or flying at different bearings or they're at the same distance from the chain home station. Here we see a straight horizontal line on the radar room's chain home demonstration unit. Although too quick for us to see, it's actually being drawn from left to right by an electron beam inside the tube. The beam then turns off and returns invisibly to the left hand side and draws the line over again. This repeats about 25 times a second. If we time our line to be drawn as the transmitted pulse is sent out from the aerial, then this is the first large spike we see here. This is typical of the type of display we'd see on a chain home operator screen with no contacts. You'll doubtless notice that the line not only shows the large transmitted pulse as far left, but also other miscellaneous pulses. The larger of these will be fixed structures nearby, such as a church steeple or tower, or possibly a collection of tall trees or distant hillside which are causing their own permanent pulse reflections. The continually moving spikes are radar noise, which is sometimes called grass. The display is becoming more interesting now, as two large spikes have appeared from the right hand side. Remember that the far right of the line is the furthest point from the transmitter aerials. By matching these up to the scale on the operator's display, they'll be able to estimate how far away the contacts are. In this example, I'd hazard a guess to say the nearer of the two is about 75 miles away. In this next clip, it's apparent that the contacts are coming closer to the transmitter. If the chain home operator uses the information they'll have recorded on the time it took for the contacts to travel across the screen, they'll be able to calculate the airspeed as well as the approximate height or altitude by using the goniometer. IFF stands for Identification Friend or Foe. 
Once Chain Home was fully operational, different methods for identifying friendly and hostile contacts were devised and tested, so by 1940 a usable system was up and running. With this setup, the friendly aircraft would carry equipment to effectively broadcast back part of the radar system to the radar station transmitting it. This made the received pulse on the Chain Home operator's console screen considerably larger than they'd normally expect to receive from a standard contact, i.e. our style one, without the IFF transponder on board. In order to make this even more clear, the return signal was pulsed on and off by a mechanical switch within the aircraft to draw attention of the Chain Home operator. In order to demonstrate an example of IFF, we must turn to another of the radar room's piece of equipment, a Monitor 28. Here you can see a typical pulsing IFF contact as would be seen by the chain home operator. Note that in this simple example it doesn't show any radar noise or grass on the horizontal line. If we now add a couple of possibly hostile contacts coming into the range of the chain home transmitter to the right, note that without the extra IFF pulse it's easy to see the difference between a friend using IFF and another aircraft that is not. Lastly, we just see the friendly contact with the extra pulsed IFF return signal again. 